Several years into its lifetime, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds remains a hot commodity, with more than a million people playing it daily according to Steam. Over the past year, Blue Hole has added three new maps, the latest being the snow-covered landscape of Vikendi. Performance has changed for the better since early access, and the 144 frames per second framerate cap is now a thing of the past. With new maps and engine updates, we felt it was a good time to update all of our benchmarks. This time around, we're testing on the Vikendi map, which currently tends to run slower than the other maps. For the benchmarks, we've tested 1080p at the very low, medium and ultra presets, along with 1440p and 4K at ultra. Some people will want to run at minimum graphics quality to try and gain a competitive advantage. It looks ugly, but it can be easier to spot people hiding in the grass or shadows. We've also tested at 720p and the very low preset on integrated graphic solutions to see how well low NPCs might perform. Starting at 1080p very low, which is similar to what most competitive streamers use, the CPU limits performance to around 200 frames per second, with minimums well below that mark. AMD GPUs appear to have an even lower maximum level of performance, as the Vega cards both fall behind the GTX 1070. For budget GPUs, the GTX 1050 and above manage 60 frames per second averages, but the RX 560 comes up short. The integrated graphics solutions also fail to break 30 frames per second at 1080p, though the Ryzen 5 2400G and its Vega 11 GPU do manage reasonable performance at 720p. Intel's HD Graphics 630, meanwhile, still only averages 23 frames per second at minimum settings, though resolution scaling might help a bit. 1080p medium drops performance on the mainstream cards by about 20 to 25 percent, though the faster GPUs are still closer to CPU limits. AMD GPUs still underperform a bit, though the RX 590 does come out ahead of both 1060 cards. The RX 570 4GB and above all break 60 frames per second, but with occasional dips below that mark. Moving up to 1080p Ultra drops performance by 35 to 40 percent relative to medium quality. Most mainstream and above cards are playable, though you'd have to adjust a few settings on the GTX 1060 and RX 570 or 580 to hit 60 plus frames per second. The GTX 1017 above average well above 60 frames per second, but the RTX 2070 and above are needed to get minimums above 60. 1440p Ultra continues the downward trend in performance, and now only the GTX 1080 and above average 60 frames per second, while the RTX 2080 Ti is the only GPU to keep minimums above 60. The Vega cards move up the charts a bit, likely thanks to their higher memory bandwidth. Alternatively, dropping the settings a few notches will get most of the mid-range and above GPUs above 60 frames per second. 4K Ultra is still brutal, with only the RTX 2080 Ti breaking 60 frames per second, but still with dips below that. For competitive reasons, playing at 4K isn't generally recommended. Even with the fastest PC around, you'd be better off dropping to 1440p. So what about the CPU side of things? How many cores does PUBG need to run properly? We've used the RTX 2080 for all these tests in order to create the biggest difference in CPU results you're likely to see. Yes, the RTX 2080 Ti would increase the gap even a bit more, but that's a bit excessive for most gamers. At the very low preset, the faster CPU is about 40% faster than the slower CPU we've tested. 1080p medium reduces the margin to 30%, and at 1080p Ultra, it's a 20% difference. At 1440p Ultra and above, it's mostly a tie between all the CPUs, though minimums do show a bit more variance. So CPU performance does help, but only with an extremely fast GPU. Of course, if you're doing other things while playing PUBG like live streaming, you'd want a more potent CPU than the i3-8100. Shifting gears to notebook testing, the mobile CPUs aren't able to keep the GPUs fully fed with data at 1080p low and 1080p medium. The result is that the GTX 1060 desktop GPU is able to outperform even the GT73 VR, 
particularly when it comes to minimum FPS. Once we move to 1080p Ultra, the mobile 1080 is at least able to move into third place, but in games that are less CPU limited, we've seen the GT73 VR outperform even the desktop 1080. Intel's newer 6 core mobile CPUs would help eliminate the performance deficit, but the desktop chips still clock 20-30% higher at stock. If you have a higher resolution mobile display, you could probably play at 1440p higher or medium and still get good performance, but frequent dips in frame rate remain a problem. The past year of updates has made benchmarking PUBG a bit less of a pain in the ass, thankfully. With the replay feature it's now possible to run the exact same test sequence on each GPU and CPU, which is what we've done for these updated results. Of course, the replays do expire each time a significant update to the engine comes along, which is relatively frequent, but we were able to get all of the testing done within a period of several days. With multiple maps now available, we've checked performance on all of them. In general, the map doesn't matter too much and they all have similar performance, except for Vikendi, which runs at about 10-20% slower. There are of course areas within each map that are more demanding, but overall frame rates are relatively consistent across the various landscapes. Thanks again to MSI for providing the hardware. All the updated testing was done with the latest NVIDIA and AMD drivers in late December 2018, NVIDIA 417.35 and AMD 18.12.3. While previous NVIDIA GPUs held a clear advantage, things are far closer these days, and really you can play on just about any decent graphics card with the right setting. For competitive players looking for optimal performance, the best results typically come with everything at minimum quality except for view distance or you could turn down just post-processing shadows and effects and get close to the same performance. Bluehole continues to add to Battlegrounds, but Unreal Engine is pretty well tuned at this point. We likely won't see any massive changes in performance going forward, but the game runs well on a large variety of hardware. The Vikendi map on the other hand is new enough that further tweaks to the level could help improve performance, particularly when it comes to minimum frames per second.